Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Marin. Once again, you are on the Left of Greg podcast. Tune in to us to with us today. We just have myself, as always, and Mr. Greg Williams, who the podcast is affectionately named after. So today we're going to go over a few things. We're going to talk about some current events, uh, talk about some of the incidents with some of the school shootings recently that we've had, and kind of how we approach that from our human behavior perspective. But uh, before we get started on that, uh, I want to kind of throw to Greg. Greg wants to go over a couple things that are new with Arcadia for those of you who are kind of following us along. Yeah, it's just, Marin, we don't have a newsletter, so I figured a couple of uh, well-placed things to bring everybody up to speed that's tracking on our, on our website. And uh, the first, of course, is that uh, Carry the Load is kicked off. So everybody, if you look at your screen now, you'll see uh, uh, Debbie Wright and Brian Marin out in San Diego. Uh, kicking off Carry the Load, an incredible organization. It's uh, going to culminate uh, coming up here real soon. Don't forget Mother's Day, everybody. Yeah. And then uh, our, our uh, advisory board member and great friend Butch Banders here, uh, Cody Banders. Again, amazingly, Debbie Wright can be in more than one place. Uh, <laughs> but we all know that the way we Carry the Load is it moves around through the Western states and then is going to end up back in Dallas. It's an incredible organization. And uh, their tagline, obviously, who are you carrying? Brian, you know, we have a, a bunch of good friends down there uh, with that. So shout out to all of our friends that carry the load. And if it comes through your town or if you want to do something, go to their website. Uh, I think that's important. And then, Brian, on the, the next one, you can see that just in yep. this last week, uh, we've hosted training in uh, New Jersey, bottom left flag, New Jersey, the Garden State, uh, incredible uh, place. Uh, uh, down on the bottom right, Texas, uh, doing some training down in, in Texas. And then yesterday, uh, Shelly and I, uh, two different locations in Colorado, uh, her on workplace violence, mine, shout out to the U.S. Forest Service uh, for their proactive predictive uh, thinking. Uh, just uh, know that we're coming to a town near you. Uh, get on board early or get yep. crushed by the snowball coming downhill. Yeah, exactly. One or the other. And by the way, it's snowing at Rogue Manor West. I Marin, can't so. believe it. I guess apparently no one told uh, Colorado that it's already May. Well, you probably heard the, uh, you probably heard that April showers bring 11 degrees in cold weather. <laughs> that, that must be a Colorado thing. We're doing fine. We're, we're doing the miserable May gray right now we have out in San Diego where it's that, that Marine layer comes in and keeps it, keeps it kind of gloomy. Uh, it's probably only 71. Today. Yeah. Well, it's out, it's only in the mid sixties. So it's a brisk morning today on the way to the gym. I uh, had to throw on a, a fleece uh, while still wearing shorts, of course, but uh, to go in there. And uh, it rained last night, so I couldn't do my outdoor workout because everything was all wet this morning. So so that men's extra small fleece, that's all available in, in and around San Diego. Is that okay. true? Or? It's, it's a youth large, okay, for yeah, one. That is and true. It's, it's, it's got the right cut for me. It works. It works perfectly. So... That being said, uh, th I did have a great day the other day with Carry the Load. They're awesome, awesome people. Super yep. emotional day. And I almost started bawling on their bus when I saw two names that I haven't seen in, in years. So um, incredible organization. So thanks to them for letting me come out and hang out and, and get, let me show me behind the, behind the uh, curtains there. I got to see everything. So it was pretty cool. So uh, today on this uh, uh, podcast, Greg, I know we're going to talk about a few things and some of it we've discussed before. But uh, specifically, we're going to kind of talk about some of the recent events with the most recent school shootings, one at the University of North Carolina, and then one at the uh, STEM school there out in Colorado, not, not far. That was the big news headlines, not far from where the Columbine shooting was, which everyone mm -hmm. uh, references a lot when these things happen. And so part of the issue here I'd like to bring up, and, and this is for specifically addressed to, to folks who've never tuned in before. Maybe this is their first time listening. And, you know, Greg, you being the human behavior uh, expert that you are, the uh, you know, DOD subject matter expert, as long as with another of it, with another, another, a number of other organizations, excuse me, you've been uh, uh, profiling, to use the word, uh, human behavior for decades and been explaining human behavior pattern recognition and analysis for decades with a specific intent, I would like to say, of, of preventing uh, catastrophic situations, right? So the whole point of learning this stuff is so you can read human behavior and predict likely outcomes so that you can mitigate these types of attacks, whether that's a school shooting, whether that's a, uh, a child sexual predator, whether that's human trafficking, uh, whether, whatever that behavior is we're trying to prevent, we can do it by just understanding human behavior. 
And I know a lot of books have been written about your work. Uh, a number yeah. of scientific no, studies. None by me. Thank you. <laughs> Science, so, well, you had all the scientific studies done on your program that show it, it, it works uh, scientifically. It's valid and it can be reproduced and it in, increases someone's situational awareness by 300%. I know one of the studies found, which is an e enormous uh, in, in, in terms of a scientific number of what, what that actually means. Uh, but basically world renowned human expert on this stuff. And, you know, I've been teaching along with you for a long time now and, and studying this stuff as well. And what gets me, I think we can start off this is one identifying that, that, you know, that these problems are not going to stop unless we do something about it. Right. So everyone can agree with that. And now what happens after that is, is everyone kind of generally get in with their wherever their political leaning or political organization says and says hey this is what the problem is and and that's fine we all as americans enjoy uh, uh political freedoms in this country that a lot of people don't get to have and i i fully support all of those people that have those opinions but what we like to focus on is uh, uh the human behavior the human element right because that's that's ultimately what 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 happens with these right it, it takes a human being to carry out an attack it takes a human being to, to uh, uh, kill a bunch of people or hurt someone. So, so that's kind of where our, our, like our lane that we stick to. And so one of the first things I want to bring up and kind of ask you about, Greg, to get your opinion on, your, your subject matter expert opinion on, is uh, there's, there's a fascination or a, a, a wanting to understand the motive uh, of, for these crimes. You know? and, and I think it's just, we've talked about this before, we have a specific podcast on motive. Uh, but this is as we deal specifically with with what just happened in the news the, the last couple of weeks. But, you know, like I, I, we were talking about before we hopped on, the New York Times, uh, enormous, huge uh, news organization, right? Their lead story on this, their big story is, hey, still unknown what the North Carolina shooter's motive was before the attack. Now, you've always said, hey, I don't care about motive. I don't care what your motivation is to do a crime. I, I care about what your behavior is. So that kind of always made sense to me. So first of all, maybe we can address is, you know, what is your thoughts on, on why people are so interested in what the motive is? And what is your opinion, your sub subject matter expert opinion on, on, you know, on motive? What does it matter? Do we need to know it? Does it help anything? Does it help us prevent the next one? Does it help? Why are we so interested in it? Yeah. And, and uh, thank you for, for offering, first of all, for all the, the listeners, uh, Marin called and said, hey, let's do a pod at 1300. No advance notice whatsoever for either of us. And Brian, I know you've been mulling around this in your head. And so I just want to address the loaded nature of the question yeah. <laughs> and ask, ask if you could say subject matter expert three more times there yeah, yeah. in that intro. Now, first of all, uh, thanks for what you did uh, with Carry the Load. Let's go back to that. Then let's fast forward to your, your comment uh, about, the, uh, about the school shootings. Uh, pre uh, the motive stage, when when you went back, uh, you said uh, we can all agree. Uh, words to the effect: you said we can all agree that they're going to continue until we do something about them. I would take umbrage with that. I would say they're going to continue forever, and and the impact right. is that we fail to understand that we've declared war on drugs. Uh, and we're still dealing with drugs. We've declared right. war on all the, and, and I use that terminology because that's what we, you know, we, we, we in, impose a drug czar upon uh, right. the issue. And, you know, we insert these ideas. Here's the thing, okay? As long as you have a captive audience, you're going to have a person that's going to try to uh, criminally or, or terroristically or, or just through rage, they're going to try to target those folks. And, and whether it's road rage or whether it's workplace violence or whether it's school, get it out of your head that it's going to go away. It's never going to go away. There's always going to be damaged humans. That's where you have to interject something. You got to address the damaged, damaged human. So if we go back to your North Carolina shooter, here we got a high functioning autistic kid uh, that had mental health issues that nobody wants to talk about. As a matter of fact, uh, I remember hearing in the car on like NPR or something where the dad said, Hey, this isn't in my kid's DNA. Uh, 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 even though the vid's rolling with him uh, capping rounds and shooting people like it's free. The problem that we have is, uh, uh, and in the final, before I dig in, 
the final, Brian, you, you sometimes say, hey, we've discussed this before. Hey, listen, we're rehashing cabbage that we're always going to talk about, right. but it's right. always from a new perspective. So don't get yes. the idea that we're going back over something. This is all new. All it's new. as new as, as, as the news media uh, declaring a, a first alert action date, which is another uh, uh, thing. Every single time one of these comes up, we have to have 360 coverage of the situation from the, from the ground. So go back to the shooter in North Carolina, the motive. Uh, uh, is worthless. So what is it? The motive is a totem. The motive, is, is, the motive is, is designed to let us sleep at night because if the motivation was to attack Christians, if the motivation was to attach, uh, attack uh, uh, braille-reading, uh, one-legged people that live in Florida, then we feel great because we're in Colorado and we don't fall into that group. Right. We think that somehow we're outside of that target group. Okay. Then we also think that these guys are targeting or these females uh, uh, with yesterday, which threw everybody off. And because we have a LGBTQIA issue on, on the, on the Colorado shooting, nobody's going to touch it. They'll all tell you, well, the females are juvenile, so we can't touch it. No, they can't touch it because it's a flipping hot potato. The news right. doesn't want to touch things they can't understand. So again, we have to create that, that Sasquatch. We have to create that Yeti. We have to create this thing that's outside of our, our Ken. So guy in North Carolina says my, con my, my son couldn't have done this because my, my son doesn't have that DNA. Then everybody that lost a child, and listen, folks, I am so sorry you lost a child. No, no adult should ever outlive their children. But us immediately patting ourselves on the back on the news and saying what an incredible response to the STEM, STEM school shooting. Listen to me for a minute. One student is dead. A wonderful life was snuffed out. And many other kids were shot and will be traumatized for life. For life. So yeah. That's not what we're going to applaud ourselves about. And I'm glad, first responders, I'm glad the EMT got their head out of their butt. But then we go to the, the principal of Columbine 20 years later and say, what do you think about the response? That's all Band-Aids on a gaping arterial wound. What we need to do is we need to figure out that we have to have training to identify broken humans. And that training exists, and these folks are insider threats. An insider threat is typified and characterized by somebody that uses special knowledge to gain an advantage over a type of victim. And so here again, we have kids that are students at the school that go and shoot where they're familiar. And, and somebody is going to tell you, Brian, that we still don't know the motive. Motive doesn't matter. Weapon doesn't matter. Stopping uh, uh, or add, adding legislation for a bump stock is not going to stop one more school shooting. And then somebody will counter with that. Right now, somebody's pissed off and they're dialing you, Brian. And right. they're going to say, yeah, but do you number of rounds and this and that and the other? Hey, wait till they get a load but, of IEDs. Wait till they get a load yeah. of popping and, up the curb and, and, and driving a vehicle through. I, I think that's a good point to, to make right here, Greg, is that, okay, you know, let's look at this from the perspective of, um, you know, a mathematician or yep. an economist or something like that. Okay. Would, would adding more guns to the issue solve it? Well, well, no, no. technically if you add more guns, you're going to have more shootings, but, but then, so then you'd go, well, okay, let's take away all the guns. Then we won't have any, well, well now you won't have any gun violence, but there's still going to be plenty of violence out there, right? And, and so exactly. I think it's that perspective and understanding of, of how people frame the issue. Yeah, but is, is, you you is hit what, it, Brian. You yeah. hit it on the head. Let's talk about violence. Let's talk about the big V. Let's talk about the rage. Listen, if you have a fail to thrive, if you have a person that's got low self-esteem and they've got uh, uh, resilience issues and they've got maybe the lack of proper motivation, parental supervision, uh, right. uh, role modeling, mentorship, whatever you want to call it. And that person also uh, 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 is now has, has an agenda. I have an ax to grind. I was fired. I lost a mom. I'm going through a divorce. This happened at school. That happened. Uh, let's go to Kip Kinkle for a minute, Thurston High School. Uh, uh, Kip Kinkle is now in the trick bag because he is acting out and things are going pretty bad for Kip. And so Kip decides that, listen, uh, my parents now know that, the, the, that I have a gun and I brought my gun to school. School resource officer came, uh, found the gun in my locker, hooks me up, hooks a couple of other people, and sends me home for the day. My parents are coming home and they're going to know about it. Kip Kinkle, okay, comes up with the plan that, listen, because I'm now going to be charged with these felonies anyway, my parents can't know about this. So he kills his dad and then he kills his mom. And then he plays video games with his friends at home before going to Thurston High School the next morning to do the shooting. 
So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a timeline of events. And I want the viewers to understand that his dad called and said, I need to get my kid into some special help, some kind of counseling, some kind of camp, because I think he's going to kill me. He told his coworkers, I right. think my son is going to kill me. Put yourself in that situation. Dad had denial with the capital D over the violence with the capital V. Now, in addition to dad being shot dead and dad saying, hey, I want to do something, mom says, I have problems and talks with her coworkers, talks with her friends, and says, Kip was acting out. I'm afraid that Kip is going to kill himself and nobody listened. And Kip Kinkle's sister is still on the road right now. I'm sorry, man, but uh, 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 shout out to you for the wrong reasons. And saying Kip didn't do this stuff. Kip was talked into it. You know, Kip doesn't have the ability to, to act out violently. Why? Because we have to wear the mask. We can't believe that Jeffrey Dahmer lived in an apartment above ours. We, right. we can't believe that, that uh, 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 Stephen Avery is guilty of, right. of one of the oldest crimes in crimes, the world yeah. on his property. Why right. can't we believe that? Because understanding that scares me. So let, let's fast forward to Columbine, and we take a look at, at uh, Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris. Uh, uh, Eric Harris's uh, uh, dad, Dylan Klebold's mom, uh, these are wonderful folks, and I have no idea how they can deal with the, the tragedy. But you have a situation here where both of these kids were acting out and acting up, and when the shooting is in progress, uh, mom's calling and saying, uh, I wish, I hope, that my son commits suicide because I right. think he's the one that's at the school killing. And the other parent calls the uh, Jeffco Sheriff's Office and says, hey, there's a shooting at Columbine, and the cops go, I know, we're well into it. And he goes, no, I'm calling because I think my I son's think one of your son. shooters. Right. Okay. And, and I, so I, so don't, don't, under, don't fail to underscore that, Brian, that everybody right. knew. And everybody in the classroom would be able to point out the likely shooters if somebody would have interviewed them. Right, right now. And that's, yes. that's, that's with uh, a lot of the courses that we taught too. is the same thing with the sexual harassment, the suicide yes. prevention stuff that we've done. Like, Hey, where we had people coming up and like, Hey, you're talking about my buddy over there or Hey, you're talking about me. Yes. And, and that, which is, you know, like, yeah, that this stuff is universal, but to go back to your comment about the denial and, and what his, uh, the, the uh, shooter's parents said, Hey, it's not in his DNA. Like, well, well, it's obviously in his DNA if he just Clearly. did it. You're just sitting yeah. there like he just com you just committed this act. You just shot all these people, and then you're going to sit there and still deny it. Well, no, it's not him. That denial, I think, is incredibly, incredibly powerful, especially when, like you just said, it's one of our loved ones. Uh, but but even even when it's so extreme, even when it's yeah. so extreme, people are are saying it, and it, there's still that element of denial. You look at Harrison Klebold's parents, or b both of their parents. Uh, you know, they knew it when it happened. Yeah, they knew it's my son. Hey, that's my boy in there doing that killing. I, I knew he was going to do it. So part of that comes into uh, what what is it that, you know, what takes that person to then go and report it and do it. And that's the what you talk about, the training, having the, uh, the competence, which will give you the confidence. But Precisely. I think it's it, even without that, uh, like you just said, you could walk into any school, any school, right, anywhere in the U.S. right now and go uh, give those kids a poll, you know, give them a test and say, write down the five people who you think are likely going to come in here and shoot up this place, right? And, and, and I guarantee they're going to be, they're going to pick the most likely people because they already know. No one knows another student like, a, like another student. Like, you know, no one knows these kids better than them, even better than the teachers do. And we all know this. So it's, it's, it's hard. I think it's easy. Well, it's, it's easier for, for kids sometimes to pick this stuff out when we're talking specifically about the school shootings is because they know that environment. And then, then you've got teachers and security folks and, and uh, administrators that work at that building. Well, they're not in that circle, right? They're looking from the outside in. And so they kind of lose this, well, I don't know how to find it. I don't know how to find it. Or I don't know how to look for this stuff, right? What am I supposed to do? How do I identify yeah. these things? Give me the checklist, Greg. Give me the, give me the 10 things I need to look for. Uh, write it right. down on this piece of paper. Give me the smart card and I'm good, right? That's all I need. And I think it's a, it's, it's a little, obviously a lot more nuanced than that, but, but it's, it takes that training. It takes well, someone to, to understand that. Let, and, let me ask you to, to put yourself on the line again. I cobbled together probably the worst rudimentary graphic in the known world in the 10 minutes I had to prepare for this while I was trying to find pants. Uh, but if you could put up that uh, hard school, soft school. So the idea here uh, uh, between hard school, soft school is that every single time that we deal with any type of entity, whether it's a small private school to a major school to, to uh, an entire uh, institution like a college level or a university, what they always want 
is they always want us to come in and tell them how to fix uh, their school so they can prevent all forms of violence from ever occurring there. And we all know that, that that's ridiculous. So if we take a look at here at the concept of the hard school, soft school, what I meant by this and what I was trying to explain through this is, look, you can harden your school through training because training changes behaviors and people will know that these baseline deviations known as anomalies are where that threat hides. Yet, when we leave, instead of sticking with the training portion, what they think is, I'll harden the windows, I'll harden the doors, I'll put up a fence to restrict this person from coming in. And they think that's going to let them sleep at night. But again, we're talking about an insider threat, a person that's already within those hard doors. Then we look at the soft school. Well, soft targeting, bad guys, terrorists, criminals are going to go around and they're going to assess and they're going to probe and they're going to say, this is a soft school. Well, we don't want to harden the school to the point where the students can't take it anymore, where the students are walking around and they're thinking, I'm being victimized. This, this isn't a school. This is, this, this is a prison or I, I might be shot any time day. In my day, we had fire drills and they were scary enough. Can you imagine being in a school nowadays and having to do an active shooter active, drill? Active shooter drills, and, yeah. and, then, and Brian, the news was saying that, oh, the kids are desensitized to it. Now the kids aren't desensitized to it. They're at early stages of PTSD from it. That's what it is. That's why they're being quiet about it. And that's why these kids are emotional wrecks when they're being brought out of the school. Listen, you can have it both ways. You can have the hard target school and you can have the soft school where the, the emotions uh, uh, play an important part in assessing the mental health of the people that are around you. But what is, what is the next phase they always do, Brian? We tell them this is how you got to harden and this is where the education and training have to be, okay? Yeah. We tell them training changes behaviors and you have to have an investment in time to get there. And then everybody ends up the thing and it's always about money. When, when the money for training a student, a staff, a teacher, a parent is less than a, a jacket, less than a pair of, of boots, less than a, a customized set of jeans that you wear, uh, and, and men small, uh, but or what does that mean? Large, youth but, large, youth but, but large. nobody wants to touch that, right? And then they come to me afterwards, and and they give the same thing that every major uh, military comes up and tells me. Yeah, but just give me three. Give me, give me a yeah, bite sized chunk. I only want these three things. There aren't three things. There's right. baseline plus anomaly equals decision, which happens to be three things. And those anomalies can be anywhere. So don't sit there and say when the person does this. TTP, tactic, technique, and procedure. Don't say when they do this, it means this. That's why the That's news media is right. coming up and they're going all over the place and saying, well, it doesn't fit the pattern, the pattern, the pattern. The yeah. pattern is they were at school and they were killing. Stop there. That's enough. Then yes. go in and say what was broken. So this kid every single day came in and said, I'm tired of whatever. And again, bullying. We throw bullying out there all the time. The kid was bullied. Have you ever been to high school? Everybody gets bullied. Everybody's in a clique. That's how our uh, progesterone and testosterone and all right. our internal uh, uh, chemicals are fighting for us to be in charge. And somebody's the shy kid and somebody's the sports nut. What you have to do is you have to level the playing field by giving everybody an advanced level of situation awareness. Once they have that in, increased level of situation awareness, it permeates everything in their life. They'll be a better driver. They'll be a better right. lover. It, they'll be a better husband or parent or wife or kid it's, because they'll, they'll be able to read the emotional capital of the people in the room with them at any time or any place. No, and, and that's, uh, that's kind of how I try to explain it to people too. It's, it's an increase in, in human performance in a sense because yes. it's human cognitive performance, which a lot of people have tried to do, but all they're doing is really just they're, 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 they're coming up with great training programs, but just for a specific, Hey, it's for this use. Yep. Hey, it's for this. It's for meditating. It's for this. It's for uh, sports performance. It's for your bench press. It's for your runtime where we're saying like, no, no, no. If you look at it, like um, I like to use the, the analogy of, of a wheel and, and you've got like a bicycle wheel where you've got the hub in the center and then each spoke goes off in a different direction. Well, if you, if you strengthen that hub, it, it, having that hub being that human behavior pattern recognition analysis training, that spoke, you can go anywhere with that. You can use it for, for anything. And I think that's important to understand. And, and one of the things I wanted to kind of hit on, because uh, you, you brought it up and identifying what we articulate this type of threat as is, is exactly what you said is an insider threat. Mm -hmm. So there's different types of insider threats that we deal with, right? And I would say, and, and in my opinion, you can, you can argue, but insider threats are one, are, are so much worse uh, because one, it damages 
not just the act itself of whatever it is, but it, it, it's, a, it's like a breakdown of trust within whatever that community or tribe is or, or location is. Uh, it's harder to detect. Uh, uh, we, it's, it's not harder to detect with training, but it's harder for us to realize uh, that the potential threat is there because we're not used to that, right? So you go back like a historical perspective, you know, you started with humans were, you know, hunter gatherers, then tribes mm -hmm. and cities then city states. And, and, you know, the, the old adage is, you know, we, we build up, we build walls to protect us, but eventually what happens if that, if that group becomes big enough, the, the, the threats aren't out anymore. They're already there. Right. Yep. So, and I think that that's hard for people to realize. So we've done insider threat training with folks like literally in Afghanistan where U S soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines were training their Afghan counterparts. And then one day, one of the people they're their very people they're working with their training comes in and tries to kill them. All right. Well, that's an example of an insider threat. And th those are huge because now there's a breakdown of trust of everyone in that unit. Well, it's no different than in a school shooting where well, that's someone on the inside. It's not the boogeyman outside that we all think of. It's not the, the psycho in some scary movie you watched. It's not some fictionalized character. No, it's one. It's the guy sitting next to you in class. It's the girl exactly. sitting next to you in class that so, you grew up like, with many that, times that, you know, and, and I, I think that's harder for people to realize because then people want to freak out and go, well, everything could be a threat. And it's like, well, no, it, it's not. And, and I mean, the list of insider threats go on as you look at, uh, I think last year, don't quote me exactly on the numbers, but it was something uh, I believe the FBI just put out. It was just, just over, just around 100 uh, law enforcement officers were killed in the line of duty uh, last year. Um, and it was something like 180 uh, committed suicide. So we always classify for our suicide prevention courses that we've done as suicide is, a, is another form of an insider threat. That person's not a threat Precisely. to you, they're a threat to themselves, but it's still one of your own. So if you look at it right there, it's the same thing. What's killing people? Well, cardiovascular disease is killing people in the U.S. Why? Because we're eating too much and we're too fat. You're your own worst enemy sometimes. And I think it's hard for people to kind of look at it from an insider threat perspective because they get very you know, it's almost like um, they get hypervigilant, right? Yes. Which, which is not good. So I don't know. I, I, I like the, well, the classification of the insider threat, but why, it, you know, again, why is it so hard for us to go, hey, it's the guy, we don't want to believe that it's our neighbor. We don't want to believe that it's our uncle uh, who's going to, or, or a family friend who's going to try and, uh, you know, uh, attack my kid, you know, at the, at the sleepover or the pool party. You know, that's too hard for me to fathom. So, so stop that then. That when, when, you know, you, you, you doc, it hurts uh, uh, every time I take a drink because the straw is digging me in the eye and the doctor tells you, well, take a hammer and hit your hand. You'll forget about it or stop taking a drink. Yeah. What, we, what we do is we have this pendulum swing of logic. So you take a look at uh, Brandon Cruz uh, uh, from Florida and Brandon Cruz is still killing uh, because two of the Parkland survivors committed suicide recently. Yeah. Uh, do you see that, uh, that, that uh, Adam Lanza uh, has been dead for years and he's still killing because one of the Sandy Hook dads committed suicide? Right. Okay? But we are not going to look at that situation for what it is and say that our uh, human behavior and our mental health system needs an overhaul. We are going to say it's a weapon or the, 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 the process to buy a weapon, for example. Right. Uh, we are not going to be able to look at Dylan Roof and see the broken kid without somebody telling us that it's a uh, race war out there and it's right. just waiting to break open. So I would say beware of certain things, Brian. Beware of certain classifications. One, for every time you have a 10-minute ab, somebody's going to come up with a nine-minute ab and they're going to be right. the hero. Yep. And so what they're going to try to do is take a human behavior based threat prediction program like, like we offer, but, but scientifically valid method, let's say. And what they're going to try to do is say, it's too hard or we can't do that. We can't. Oh my God, I've heard all the excuses. There's the first thing. So stop that. Uh, the second thing is anytime that you hear that, okay, it's art class. So put your flipping smock on so yeah. you don't get paint all over right. it. When we say we have to now put this hat down and put on the next hat, and this is our insider threat hat, then we have to take that down and right. we have to put on our rage hat. That bothers people. Uh, you, you know, we, you and I were on a business call yesterday, and, and the people clearly wanted their business, uh, their government time, in, in between all the training time. Yeah. We're lazy. We're human beings yeah. and we're lazy. Humans are inherently lazy. And, and, and the, the roll the dice crapshoot that 
we're probably not going to get attacked in our home. We're probably going to die from heart disease. Listen, we can't get the message about drunk driving across to people. There's still 55,000 people that, that die on the roads every year from that. How are we going to snap our fingers and get somebody to listen to school shooters, right? To listen to the, the, the thing. So well, I, I tell you this, stop the TTP, stop all that other crap. Right. Get D to some training and understand that there's a whole bunch of phases of de-escalation or identification before the actual gun, before the actual shooting, before the actual incident. I, and uh, you, you bring up a good point to go back to what you called the, the pendulum swing of logic. And then you, you kind of already hit it for me. What I was going to bring up is, it, you know, if you go out right now, Greg, and, and you, get, you, you, you go to the bar, you get drunk, you're driving home and you hit a vehicle and you kill someone in that vehicle, you are responsible for that. Everyone's yeah. going to blame you. Everyone's going to say you're, you know, you're a, a horrible human being. Uh, you're going to go to jail. Um, even this one, there's, there's a one right out here in San Diego. There's a, a young Navy kid who um, he killed four people. Uh, he, he drove his truck off the Coronado Bridge right at the end. There's something called Chicano Park right there in the old neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he killed four people, you know, and basically he had had some drinks earlier in the day. They're still not clear exactly how, if you, how, and he wasn't exactly very intoxicated, but he had had some drinks during the day. He was arguing, they'd shown phone records. He just got off the phone with his, with his wife and they were having an argument. They could see by text messages and everything, wasn't paying attention, uh, loses control, goes to pass a vehicle, loses control. The, his, his drives his truck right off the bridge and then and lands on four people and kills them. So he's going to jail. He's going to go to jail. The sentence it was about, I think, or I'm not sure if he's got sentence yet, but they're looking at least 10 years or whatever he's going to jail for. They're holding him responsible. They're not holding his cell phone responsible. They're not holding his vehicle responsible. Yep. They're not holding, they're, they're holding him. So why is it, why is it that when it's a shooting incident at a school, it's the gun's fault? Because Why it's something it? we can hold. Look, it, yeah. guns are scary, okay? If, if you even ask a little kid to what a bomb looks like, since our earliest memories, it's the Acme, Acme bomb, bomb that Wally Coyote big, had. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? With the fuse lid, okay? We know what that looks like, okay? So if it looks like a bomb or it looks like a gun, it's a weapon of terror based on the definition that it terrifies us, okay? I, I remember a, a good friend long time ago, and I'm not going to name drop because uh, – this is a non-attribution podcast. Nobody wants to come on and talk about the hard questions, right, Brian? No. So, so the, the one person was explaining to me that in their, their law enforcement career, uh, and it was at a federal level, that every single time that they brought out their 45 and told somebody to cease their, their illegal activity, it worked. But in certain instances when they were carrying their 38, their, their snub nose, uh, uh, they pulled that out and they had to shoot a lot more people. And they said, well, do you think there's a psychological component? Yes. So take a 0.38-inch circle and draw it on a piece of paper. Then take a 0.45-inch circle and, and draw it on, and then color them in. And when you're on the receiving end of that, the little bullet hole looks really small, and, and that 38 in your hand is kind of enveloped. So even though it's a deadly weapon, the mind looks at it and goes, well, that can't hurt that much. But then when you see that big old 45, that big horse pistol sticking up, look at the, the, the dirty, hairy thing. Yeah, so, and exactly. then, oh, my God, automatic weapons. So we don't talk about the gallons of gas and the DUI, you know, fatal. We, so, uh, but somebody has well, to have something to fight about. And those are convenient things that we can point at. So we can, for example, what part of the U.S. Constitution, what part of the Bill of Rights uh, uh, specifically covers handguns or automatic weapons? What, what covers uh, uh, the, the, the Republicans versus the Democrats? None. But they create a divisive issue. Right. Because that's how we can garner votes or get money right. or it's, exploit it, a situation. It, this it, is it, exploited it. And that's what it is. It's, it's how do I put my ideology behind what, what this is? How do I advance my cause with it? How do I politicize this, this issue? And, you know, you just to bring up what, cause you brought up Harrison Klebold and you brought up, you know, those guys would have killed every kid in that school had they yep. been better bomb makers. There was what, 90, yep. 99, I believe. 99 explosive devices. 99 explosive devices, 99 explosive just, devices. Out, right. of, out of propane tanks and camping fuel and, basic stuff that you can go buy at the home depot right now yes and we can't ban that stuff because because we you know that's just the whole idea and you brought it up at the beginning of the podcast too is is the the war on drugs okay what has that gotten us what is what are the second and third order effects of of, of those actions uh, you know what what have we 
I believe cocaine is cheaper now than it ever has been because yes. more demand than there or more supply than there is demand uh, after 30, 40 years of fighting it. And, and you're going, well, maybe there's, but we want it's that, that whole sunk cost. But there's got to be a different way, Brian. And right. nobody wants to look outside the box and nobody wants to look at science. So let me, let me reverse the, the table and, and ask you a question. You know that there was an attack at a U.S. military installation down in Texas. And you know that the insider threat uh, was a soldier right. and, and hurt and killed a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Why isn't that on the tip of our tongues and why isn't that in the news all the time? What failed in that terrorist attack? Well, exactly is what, what, and I know what you're speaking of, uh, uh, Major Nadal Hassan, uh, Precisely. down, at, uh, down in, at, um, Fort Hood. Um, I believe we might've had some folks down there at that time. Uh, we did. We had them. Uh, okay. you, you remember the phone call? We yes. were teaching on the East coast and they yes. were locked. They were sheltering in they were, place. They were locked the down. Shooter. Um, but, but what did he, what well, did he omit he, from his he plan? He didn't get to his exploitation phase, which is the part of the, part of the final step in that, that terrorist planning process. He never so, got to exploit his crime because we took that away from him. So, so. he classified they, his the news media and the, the humans, and I believe it was, that as, there were, there was folks in the previous administration kind of pushing for that, that said, this is workplace violence. This isn't a terrorist attack. So exploitation, Brian, I'm, yes. I'm getting to this point works mm -hmm. both ways. Right. I exploit an incident like that mm -hmm. because I can say that this happened. And so I can twist it from different angles. I can turn that, you know, right. that little ball with that hamster running around that little clear yeah. ball. <laughs> I can turn it around and I say, well, this is about the nation of Islam. Nothing right. could be further from the truth. Well, this has to do with this. Well, that's not true either. So everybody can pick and choose what they want to take away from it. So right. what's the difference? What's the difference? I would ask you with a school shooting or a school shooter. Uh, look at the uh, Isla Vista and the manifesto. Uh, right. look, look at many of the other incidents. Stop characterizing people that would, would force violence on others and subjugate them and, and shoot them just because of the institution. Stop thinking of it in those terms. Stop thinking that this is a weapon or no weapon. Brian, would you agree that there are incidents of blue on blue uh, when you have coppers showing up to an intense scene. Yeah, I believe that just happened in Colorado. I don't think it's being reported very wildly, but, okay. but that's the whole thing is you're having people there with guns. Now the police show up to do their job, what they're trained to do and handle that situation. And who do you have here? Someone with a gun. So everyone starts shooting each other, even so, though they're- So they're let's roll that back. Uh, let's roll yeah. that back. Let's scientifically take a look. And you got the dry erase board. I right. wish we were prepared for this. Yeah. A lot of people can legally carry, including in churches and schools and other yes. places. But a lot of the sheriffs in certain counties are overwhelmed by that, the, the request from people to, to open carry. So mm -hmm. sometimes they have to take a test. Very few of the times that they have to take a test, do they have to put a bullet in a gun or right. fire down range. So, so you saying that you're legally uh, 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 authorized to carry a weapon doesn't mean that you have the training commensurate with right. carrying that weapon. So a school it, resource officer doesn't mean that he's got some incredible training, just like the federal marshal on an airplane, yeah. where, where he knows exactly how to shoot between the seats and not hit your drink while your kid's doing a crossword puzzle. I'm telling you that, that those guns exacerbate an already dangerous problem, you know? So right. I, I'd say be careful it's, about that. You know, no, 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I have, I have a driver's license, but, but I'm, I'm not winning the, the Daytona 500 or the Indy 500 anytime. Yep. It's the same thing. Well, but I've I got a license. With you. I, so like, <laughs> I, got a, I, know. I got a license. Well, you're usually yelling the whole time we're talking, so it's very distracting. I'm on the phone with my 66-ounce double gold. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. no, but that's a point well taken, Brian. The, yeah. the, the thing is, you and I uh, 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 both have weapons available to us, okay? Right. And, and uh, uh, we have engaged in uh, advanced critical thinking and said, I'm not taking that weapon to work today and brandishing it at my coworkers, okay? Yes. So there are broken people out there. There are broken humans that need help. They need health care. They need mental help. They need uh, their families or some other outside intervention, and they're not getting it. So they, in their mind, come up with the Kip Kinkle plan, which says, hey, I'm going to jail anyway. My parents are going to send me off to camp. I've got no other recourse. Well, I would tell you, if you're thinking about being a school shooter right now, there are options. There's a ton yes. of options, and you can get help. And that's where 
that that first step you know the 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 i used to tell people in martial arts, martial arts class the black belt isn't the end the black belt's the beginning that's the first step you're going to take as right. a martial artist well it, for those wannabe school shooters out there you got to take a step back and you got to look around and you got to say hey listen yeah okay i'm misunderstood and yes i've been marginalized and so i can act out this way and turn this into something or you know what i can get help and i can turn my life into something and i know nobody wants to attribute it to gandhi but you can be the change that you want to see in the world so so how do you want to do it you want to be remembered as that 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 person that choked somebody out or killed somebody or did something right. like this you know that that's just well, that, and that goes back to all the everything you were talking about with with the you know uh, lack of role models mental health issues yep. yeah that's how some of those people want to be remembered but but you you when you meet those people you can identify them those students can identify them so 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 i i, I think the, the the big takeaway here is 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 that one these you're saying that these attacks can be prevented or mitigated. You, you, can, you can stop it before it happens. The, the lion's share of any violent incident can be predicted, and therefore the effects can be mitigated through understanding human behavior and those pre-event indications of violence that are all over when you have the appropriate amount of training to see them start to coalesce. Yeah. So, but what does that mean? Like, Hey, Greg, like, look, man, I'm a, I'm a veteran or Hey, some guys I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cop. Hey, I've been doing this. Hey, look, I'm pretty situationally aware. I take a look around where I'm going. I, I'm, I think I'm good. I think I'd see this. Right. It's where's Waldo, man. <laughs> yeah. You ever, you ever hand a kid a where's Waldo book and watch the schism going on behind their head. And then all of a sudden you got to break it down for it. You take Waldo alone and go, this is Waldo. This is my G. And then you put Waldo with three other people in a room and then five and then 10 and then 50. That's the way that you got to do it for your brain because it's got to make sense. But instead what we do is we say, well, don't worry. Do you think all coppers have the same level of training? Do you think no. the state yeah. police has some you know, special training that a local copper doesn't have? You are rolling the dice with who's going to be showing up at your scene. And even if they've had training, the training that they've had is at bang and right of bang. Yes. And that left of bang training is the essential stuff. These uh, uh, behaviors likely indicate that this is nigh, that this crime is afoot, that something is already in progress. And any effort you take there to give yourself that gift of, of time and distance is going to be well placed. It's going to be time well spent. It's going to be money well spent. And Brian, I will tell you this, spend the money, spend that money on training and spend that time, or you're going to be spending money on lawyers and you're going to be spending mm. money on lawsuits, and you're going to be spending money in a fuel tank to, to go to the morgue and identify your kid and, and to go to the cemetery to pray for him. And that's hard math, Brian, and it's hard to say that, but I'm telling you that it, training changes behaviors. It, it is, and I think, it's, it, it, I think that point of that, what you're, what you're saying, is that we're going we're gonna to pay either way. One way or the other. We're, we're paying one way or the other. So how do we want to pay for it? Do we want to pay for it to to prevent these and stop this from happening yep. ever in the first place? Or do we just want to, we want to pay the, the, the cleaning bill? I mean, yeah, I and, and, and speak up. You're a student listening to this podcast. Speak up to your administration. What have you done to harden this school and soften our hearts and open our eyes so we can see these uh, situations and don't accept that they put bars on the windows or a new access code because an insider threats already inside. Uh, you're an administrator. You're a teacher. What has your district done? You're a local copper. What training have we done at Bang? Okay, I get it. But what about left of Bang? What, what about, you know, how these things start to come together? And, and guess what? That training is out there. Uh, you have to dig a little bit. You have to find it. And, and you know what? Uh, 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 any training beats no training. So I'm glad for those people that are doing the at Bang training. But if you're fighting with somebody, you missed all the cues. If you're shooting yeah. somebody, you missed all you the miss opportunities at de-escalation. I'm just saying. Yeah, and I and that point right there is very hard for people to understand. You yes. look at especially like law enforcement training, military training for sure. It's uh, it security type training. When this happens, I do this. It's like okay, but you're you're already starting at the wrong place, and yep. that's all this great stuff. People are trying hard. Hey, we're gonna get better at reacting to these school. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna create this interagency alert system. We're gonna do this. That is all good stuff. But look at what you're doing. You're accepting the fact that it's going to happen. Hey, we're gonna put these uh, uh, trauma bags and and uh, tourniquets in the school. You're accepting the fact that it's gonna happen. I just think we can hold ourselves to a higher standard, right? Yeah, it, yeah. And I wouldn't that's cancel all that. Listen, no, the yeah. Heimlich maneuver yes. never stopped a person 
from, from choking, choking on the meat. Right. Now, they may have mitigated that situation <laughs> and allowed that person to live, but running around with that poster didn't do anything, and, and you know, those people uh, were still choking. So, so the idea of having that AED at the golf course is great, but that's not going to stop heart disease. Do you get what I'm trying to right. say? The, the idea of, of carding somebody to stop them from drinking alcohol isn't right. going to stop that teen from having that booze party. You have to get involved, and you have to do it at the grassroots level, and you have to build that, that group of, of, of trained individuals that right. export that training so you know. And you know what? Somebody's still going to slip through, Brian. But I'll tell you what, then it becomes, you, a, 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 it becomes so nominal that, that right. it will be remarkable then when we talk about it. And, and that's, that's the point that, that you know, I, I think that's a, that's a good spot also to kind of end on is, you know, you have to build that culture of, of awareness and prevention and building that culture takes more than one person and it takes um, a, a lot of effort. Um, but like you just said, yes, will someone, is there, is there always going to be crime? Yeah, yes. <laughs> there is. Sorry. Uh, uh, but, but because there's always going to be criminals. And, yes. and, but, but can we mitigate a lot of it? I, I believe so. And especially with specifically what we're talking about with these, these school incidents, which are, which are horrific uh, and, and no one thinks it's ever going to happen to them. And that's let's the take thing. response. Let's yeah. take response and let's dial that back to prevention. Let's right. dial that back to uh, uh, being able to see. And I like it again, Brian, to that Jeep tour. I was taking a lot yeah. of people out on the Jeep tours and until I stopped and I <laughs> said, that's a deer. A deer has four of these and held up the sign yeah. and then did one of those. Until we get to that level, we're not going to see these folks. They're going to keep slipping through the cracks. Well, I think uh, that's a good spot to kind of bring it in for a landing. Uh, I'll have all the links to our website, of course, but anyone listening, uh, go to www.arcadiacognorati.com. Uh, you can check us out on the left of Greg uh, podcast on YouTube. Call so us. Just, yeah, just, just uh, get on YouTube and search left of Greg podcast. Um, also, uh, we're, you know, Arcadia Cognorati is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. So check out the social media accounts. We're always posting new stuff, picks stuff for you guys to learn. Uh, just follow along and support, subscribe, like all that stuff. And we would really appreciate that. So Greg, thank you for the time and, um, thank you, Brian. thanks everyone for listening. And until next time, uh, everyone, uh, be safe.